Hi class, please watch this lecture and take notes and on Monday we will more than likely or possibly have a little quiz but we will definitely talk about this on Monday. So immigration and urbanization. Immigration patterns to the United States changed significantly in the late 19th century. Until the 1880s, a majority of immigrants to the United States came from Northern and Western Europe and were Protestant Christians with uh, a slight exception was a large influx of Irish Catholic immigrants in the 1840s and 50s. This changed in the early 1880s and we saw a large number of Catholic and Jewish immigrants arriving from Southern and Eastern Europe. The settlement patterns of immigrants also shuffled in the 1880s with recent arrivals more likely to settle in the cities of the Northeast and Midwest than earlier generations of immigrants who were more likely to settle in the rural areas. The settlement patterns of immigrants was part of a mar larger trend of urbanization in the United States. Not only were new immigrants settling in urban areas, Americans from rural areas were also increasingly moving to cities in search of economic opportunities and in some cases, an escape from the boredom and isolation of rural life. The influx of people caused the size of American cities to grow rapidly in the late 19th century, and high demand for housing meant that there were few good options for new arrivals. So many poor immigrants and migrants from the country settled in tenements, which were small rental units that often consisted of one, only one room. We've talked about this quite a bit in class recently. Life in the tenements varied from city to city and from building to building for that matter, but the conditions were often insanitary and overcrowded. The tenements of New York City were especially infamous for their terrible living conditions. Single rooms were commonly occupied by multiple, multiple families or as many as a dozen single occupants and did not have private bathrooms. Many units also lacked running water and electricity, and some lacked windows for ventilation or natural light. These living conditions had serious consequences for residents. Tenement dwellers in New York suffered from much higher rates of infectious diseases, infant mortality, and crime than those living in less densely populated and impoverished areas of the city. Jacob Rees immigrated to the United States from Denmark in 1870 when he was 20 years old. He arrived in New York City nearly penniless and worked a variety of odd jobs before entering the newspaper business. In 1877, Rees took a job as a police reporter for the New York Tribune. As part of his job, he would, take, he would uh, ride along with police officers and police reporters to the New York's most impoverished and crime-ridden neighborhoods, which gave him a first-hand look at the living conditions in the tenements. His experiences convinced him that something needed to be done to improve the living conditions of the poor, and he became a housing reformer in New York City, supporting efforts to change the city's housing laws and policies. Reese and Flash Photography in 1887, Rees learned that German inventors had created a new type of flashlight powder, which could be used to photograph dark spaces. The flash powder, a combination of magnesium and potassium chloride, was ignited with a spark, sending a cloud of fire and sparks into the air that would illuminate a space long enough for a photograph to be taken. Reese saw the potential of this innovation for photographing the windowless interiors of the tenements and the dark alleyways that surrounded them. Over the next decade, Reese used his new flash technology and a small detective camera to take hundreds of photographs of New York's poorest neighborhoods and those who lived in them. Some of Reese's photographs were posed, while others were candid, with his subjects unaware that they were being photographed. Reese would sometimes enter tenements and surprise tenants with a blinding flash, fleeing before they knew what had happened. This photograph shows an Eastern European immigrants in their one-room tenement. The room served as both their home and workplace. Reese reported that members of this family worked 17 hours a day, seven days a week, making cigars in the room, and that the cramped space reeked of toxic fumes. Notice the flash from Reese's flashlight powder in the window on the left. Reese and Advocacy for the Poor 
Reese hoped to use his photographs to convince others to support housing reform. In 1888, he created a slideshow lecture called The Other Half, How It Lives and Dies in New York. The presentation included about 100 images on glass slides that he showed with a magic lantern, an early type of projector. Reese narrated the slides as he displayed them, and he was an excellent storyteller, blending humor, sympathy, and hard data about the effects of poverty in New York. His presentation received rave reviews, and this lecture was soon in high demand. In the coming years, Reese would travel for months at a time, delivering the lecture across the country, charging around $150 per lecture. Much of the popularity of Reese's lecture stemmed from the power of the images that he selected. He chose photos that were compelling and troubling to his middle-class audiences, few of whom, whom have seen urban poverty up close. The photograph shown here, which Reese, or sorry, Reese titled Bandit's Roost, shows an alley between tenement buildings in Mulberry Bend, one of the city's most dangerous neighborhoods. On the left is a young mother with her children. On the right is a group of toughs staring warily at the camera. Reese likely knew that this image would have played to his audience's concerns about children living in poverty and stoked their fears of crime and violence in poor immigrant neighborhoods. How the Other Half Lives In 1889, an editor from Scribner's attended Reese's lecture and offered him $150 to write an article for the widely read magazine. The article eventually led to a book deal in 1890 for How the Other Half Lives. In this influential book, Reese described the squalid conditions in the tenements and the lifestyles of poor immigrants who lived in New York's poor slums. Reese also argued that the problems of the poor were caused by bad housing conditions, not hereditary, and that the worst effects of urban poverty could be alleviated by better housing and good government policies.